Friedland here, the Bass Whisperer. Very happy to be here for Bass Magazine. You can find us at BassMagazine.com. This week we're taking a look at a new creation from Master Luthier Rob Elric of Chicago, his new Icon Series Bass. The Icon is obviously Elric's take on the P Bass. You know, it's the single most popular bass platform in the world. And all the custom builders, you know, eventually people just keep asking him, why don't you build like a Fender style thing? Well, you know, so he gave it some thought, and this is what he came up with. It's a wonderful bass. Let's take a look. The first thing I noticed when I picked up this bass is, oh my God, it's so light. This thing has got to be like seven and a half pounds. It's incredible. It has an ash body with a burled maple top. It's got an Elric bridge, which is made by Hipshot, but it's a proprietary bridge. The custom wound Bartolini passive split coil precision bass pickup. The heelless neck joint design gives you perfect clearance to the top frets, while the five bolt asymmetrical pattern gives you an airtight coupling of neck and body. The three piece quarter sawn maple neck is graphite free and is joined to the tilt back headstock with Elric's own industrial strength headstock joint. Let's hear a little slap rooney. Well, the first thing I notice, the texture of the P bass is definitely there, the bark, the spank, but this thing plays fast. I mean, it responds like, eh. I always found that P basses, at least, you know, the way I set mine up, you got to work them, you know. I like to have it so that you can, like, dig in and play a little bit hard, and it's sort of an old school thing. This thing is like butter, so I don't have to work as hard, which is a little bit of an adjustment for me, because I'm used to, like, really muscling the thing. One of the things that you get with a high-end instrument is that kind of tailored response. This is a fine instrument, but it sounds like a P-Bass. For an example, listen to the dynamic range from quiet to screaming. You know, at each level of hitting the thing, the timbre changes and the instrument really brings that out. The thing about the P bass is, you know, you can hit it to a point and then it just sort of starts to compress. It's like, nope, that's it. I'm not giving you any more. This thing, you can smack it and it just keeps giving you more. It's kind of neat. Finger style. Darken it up a little bit. Turn the tone all the way off. All right, let's hear some pick style. Here's another Rob Elric Icon bass. This one's got the PJ pickup configuration. It has an alder body and a beautiful quilted maple top. It's got a Santos rosewood fingerboard, which is pow ferro. It's a sustainable rosewood. It's legal. It's not going to get you busted going across international borders, you know, the, with endangered wood species. First, let's listen to the P bass pickup so you can get a good comparison to the other bass. Well, gorgeous is a definite uh, mid-range presence that I'm hearing over the other bass. I might, theoretically, I could say it's the alder versus the ash body. Could be the maple neck versus the rosewood. You know, this is what I expect to hear. 
and I'm hearing it. So, am I crazy? Maybe so. Now we'll dial in the back pickup and get a whole different thing. Well, it's a tighter sound. It's a bright, you know, brighter, tighter. Just what you'd expect when you add this thing in. Well, let's solo the back pickup and hear a little slap that way. Well, very tight, very bright, very crispy. Uh, you lose a lot of volume. Look, that's what happens. The pickup placement, pickup design. So let's beef it up a little bit here. A little bottom. Yeah, that's beautiful. Chunky, let's roll some tone off. You've heard the P bass pickup solo. Now let's blend in some of the bridge. First, I'm going to run them both full up. Now I'm going to roll the back pickup off just a little bit. The change is right there, and I'm at about like eight. Now it's a little bit tighter because of this, but it's not, I'd say the P bass pickup is dominating at this point. But you can tell it's still very different than when you roll it off completely. Here's it at eight. Now here's completely off. It opens up, it gets wider, it gets rounder. So, you know, there is still, uh, you know, a range, say, when they're both up full, you get a very distinct sound. And then say between like 10 and backed off to about 7, you get a range of P bass dominant sound, but there's still some of the tightness from the bridge. It's kind of a cool thing. Now I'm going to roll off some of the treble. Tone all the way off. Again, one of the things I notice with this instrument is its incredibly fast response time. I'm used to pushing against the sluggishness of a P bass. This thing, it's, it's ready to go. It's ready to play. So there's a bit of an adjustment for a guy like me who plays on you know, old P basses and flat wounds. This thing is just like a hot rod. It's ready to go. It's fast. It's quick. It's responsive. It's dynamic. It's beautifully made. It's attractive. It's light. This is a hand-carved instrument. This is not a production run, you know, take two pieces of wood and bolt them together and hope you get something good. And so while it may sound like a P-Bass, uh, the feel of this thing is very high-end, it's very luxy, it's beautiful. And, you know, if you're looking for something high-end with a traditional sound, this could be just the ticket.